ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. ADHD is the most commonly diagnosed behavioral disorder of childhood. According to the 2011 study by the National Institute of Mental Health, ADHD affects about 3 to 5 percent of school-aged children. ADHD is diagnosed much more often in boys than in girls. How do we define ADHD? The symptoms of ADHD fall into three groups. Lack of attention, hyperactivity, and impulsive behavior or impulsivity. Let's define those groups in a little more detail. Lack of attention. The student with ADHD may be easily distracted, miss details, forget things, and frequently switch from one activity to another. They may have difficulty focusing attention and completing a task or learning something new. They might have trouble completing or turning in homework assignments, often losing things like pencils or homework needed to complete their assignments. For this reason, students with ADHD often have trouble being organized. Or they might just seem to struggle to follow instructions. Hyperactivity. Students with ADHD may fidget and squirm in their seats. They might talk nonstop. They might run around the classroom, touching or playing with anything and everything in sight. They may have trouble sitting still during activities, school or story time. They might be constantly in motion, or they may just have difficulty doing quiet tasks or activities. Impulsivity. The student with ADHD might be very impatient. They might blurt out inappropriate comments show their emotions without restraint, and act without regard for consequences. They may have difficulty waiting for things they want or waiting their turns in games. They might often interrupt conversations. Impulsivity can cause social problems with others who might see them as inconsiderate or rude. So what causes ADHD? Scientists are not sure what the causes are although many students suggest that genes play a large role. Like many other conditions, ADHD probably results from a combination of factors. Genetics. Researchers are looking at several genes that may make people more likely to develop the disorder. Knowing the genes involved may one day help researchers prevent the disorder before symptoms develop. Environmental factors. Studies suggest a potential link between cigarette smoking and alcohol use during pregnancy and ADHD in children. In addition, preschoolers who are exposed to high levels of lead found in plumbing or paint may have a higher risk for developing ADHD. Food additives. Recent British research indicates a possible link between consumption of certain food additives like artificial colors or preservatives and an increase in activity. And brain injury. Though only a small percentage of children with ADHD have suffered a traumatic brain injury. Now, sugar, the idea that refined sugar causes ADHD or makes symptoms worse, is popular. But more research discounts this theory than supports it. There can be problems recognizing ADHD. Depression, lack of sleep, learning disabilities, tic disorders, and behavior problems may be confused with or appear with ADHD. Most students with ADHD also have at least one other developmental or behavioral problem. ADHD is a long-term chronic condition. If it is not treated appropriately, ADHD may lead to drug and alcohol abuse, failure in school, problems keeping a job, or even trouble with the law. Some students with ADHD primarily have the inattentive type. Those with the inattentive type are less disruptive and are more likely to not be diagnosed with ADHD. About half of children with ADHD will continue to have troublesome symptoms of inattention or impulsivity as adults. However, adults are often more capable of controlling behavior and masking their difficulties, which makes it even more difficult to recognize that the adult has ADHD. So how can we support students with ADHD in the classroom? One of the primary things we can do is to help the students stay organized and follow directions. 
Create a schedule for the student. Keep the same routine every day if possible. Include, include time for homework, outdoor play, and indoor activities. Keep the schedule on the student's desk or the front of their planner. Write changes on the schedule as far in advance as possible. Organize everyday items. Have a place for everything and help the student keep everything in its place. Use homework and notebook organizers like planners and use organizers for school material and supplies. Have clear and consistent rules and give praise or rewards when rules are followed. Children with ADHD often receive and expect criticism. Look for good behavior and praise it. Pair students up to check work. Provide peer tutoring to help students with ADHD review concepts. Let students with ADHD share recently learned concepts with struggling peers. Use peer tutoring whenever possible. Use older students to help your student with ADHD and perhaps allow them in turn to tutor a younger student. According to the Hawaii Content Performance Standards, or hiccups, my future language arts class will need to demonstrate certain benchmarks or skills that may prove difficult for students with ADHD. For instance, Benchmark Language Arts 10.6.1 concerns discussion and presentation as it pertains to participation in small groups. Students with ADHD may have problems with impulsivity and interrupting others, which may come off as aggressive or rude, and this can cause social problems and classroom disruption. One possible solution may be to develop a secret language like discrete gestures or words the student and I have agreed upon to let him or her know that they are interrupting, without embarrassing them or continually haranguing them in front of their peers to be quiet. I don't want to shut the student down by constantly quieting them. Benchmark Language Arts 10.6.8 concerns media comprehension and interpretation where the student needs to be able to describe the effects of style and language choice in visual media. Now, students with ADHD definitely benefit from using multi-sensory presentations, but they may be distracted by images or music that is unrelated to the subject matter. It is important to preview audio-visual aids to be sure that distractions are kept to a minimum. For example, I'll need to be sure that interesting pictures and or sounds relate directly to the material that is being learned. And this will make your student happy. Finally, Benchmark Language Arts 10.4.2 concerns grammar and mechanics. The student must use knowledge of sentence structure, grammar, punctuation, capitalization, and spelling to produce grade-appropriate writing in standard English. Students with ADHD may have difficulty waiting for corrections for feedback to be useful. By the time they receive feedback on their efforts, they may have already moved on and feel unconnected to a task they completed days ago. The solution here may be to provide self-correcting materials to allow for immediate feedback to the student. Shortening the time between assignment and correction allows the student to assess their progress, an important thing for the student who already has difficulty focusing their attention. The student with ADHD can have a lot to offer a class. If only we take the time to help them help themselves be organized contributors.